call this meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business, can you do a roll call, Diana? Your Worship, I can confirm that Councillor Scott Lewis and myself, Deputy Clerk Diana Wilson, are in attendance in the Township office. For those participating by video conference, please answer present when your name is called. Mayor Minnell. Present. Deputy Mayor Jaguer. Present. Councillor Widner. Present. Councillor Moore. Present. Councillor Serna. Present. Councillor Galinsky. Present. Chief Administrative Officer Clerk Michelle Casabecchia Summers. Present. Director of Fire and Emergency Services Brent Smith. Present. Director of Public Works Matt Sweetland. Present. Director of Finance Arun Mohili. Present. Director of Development Services Adam Betteridge. Present. Drainage Superintendent Bob Lopez. Present. Manager of Building and Bylaw, CBO, Scott Sutherland. Present. IT Manager, Cecil Coxon. Present. That's everyone. Thanks, Diana. Uh, next order of business is disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Yeah, I have a couple. Mark? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item E2, PW 2104, drainage update, and PW 2108, reappointment of drainage engineers. Thank you. Thank you. And also, I have a, a conflict of interest on the uh, Van Weichen uh, municipal drain clean out. I am a part of that drain, so I will declare a conflict of interest and I'll ask Dominique to fill in when that comes up. Mayor Manel, I also have a conflict of interest on that, on the Van Weichen drain. Okay, so noted. Thank you, Chess. The minutes from January 7th, was there any errors or omissions? Seeing none, can I have a mover and second over the minute, please? So sure. moved. Serta and Lewis, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a presentation. Uh, Kelly, are you doing this or who's doing this one? I think I am. Okay, go <laughs> ahead. Okay, um, we sent the information out to all of you. Um, Don and Rosemary and myself are working on a veterans banner project. Um, there were pictures sent out. You could see how big they were. It's a way for us to honor the veterans of Springfield and South Dorchester here in our village. It will promote um, the history. It'll educate the public on the faces of these veterans um, who served. And it does not have to be a deceased member. It can be anyone that has served in any conflict, any war. Uh, we've got approval from the Legion. We're still waiting on approval to use their poppy and logo on the banners. Um, what we are looking for from the township is um, first of all, your permission to do this. It will mean attaching uh, stainless steel bands to the light standards in the village. And I did a rough count. There's around 50 um, light standards that we can use. There might be a few more. Um, we're looking to pay for all of, the, all of that. That's not a problem. Um, secondly, we're asking for installation help. Um, once we have poles with the bands on them, we will need help um, manpower and equipment to get those banners up there. It will be a time frame of about a month, three to four weeks, right around from say Thanksgiving, right straight through to right after Remembrance Day. Um, our goal this year is to get banners purchased. Uh, we have a list of 10 people, 10 veterans that we think we can get um, approval from the families and get pictures and get that done. Dawn is going to donate her time as a, an art, art person and do that so we can save on that kind of thing. Um, we would like to start them uh, on Ron McNeil line on the, the block where the Sanitap is. There are three light standards on that block, but one I'm not so sure we can use because of the cables that are on it, the position of them. So this would be the main part where we would start. So 
Each light standard can house two banners. So that would mean five poles this year that we would we would try and, and do. If it um, takes off and we get more, it's it's just a time factor to get the artwork done and, and get the picture done and get the banners created. So like I say, what we're looking for from you is permission and help with the installation. Now, I know in future, um, the lioness or future swans as we're going to be called. We are looking at getting a charitable account set up for um, our memorial um, pavers that we do here so that we would incorporate um, these banners into that as well so we can offer um, charitable receipts for those as well. So we're hoping to get donations in to help pay for some of this too. So we're just here to get permission and ask, answer any questions. Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, go ahead, Max. I have one concern I didn't hear in uh, Kelly's presentation. In my, it is my knowledge that those hydro poles are proposing to attach to, they belong to Hydro One. I know we had to go through the hoops to get permission to put the village street lights on those poles and get their blessing for it. Now there could be the odd pole in the village that also belongs to Eastlink, former Amtelecom, but that's something that will have to be in my opinion, looked at before much progress can be achieved to, to take the proposal to fertility. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Max. And, and certainly, Kelly, I, I, I certainly endorse your endeavor. I, I'm, I'm very encouraged that we need to put our veterans out front on, especially before Remembrance Day. My dad was a World War II vet and spent three and a half years in a prisoner of war camp. So certainly I, I endorse it. But as Max said, there is a hoop to jump through. And so I'm going to suggest that staff uh, be in contact with Ontario Hydro, get permission from them. If we get the go ahead, and I am almost sure that we can do this uh, with uh, the help from the, the township staff. Rick, Perfect. did you have a comment? I, I did, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor to Kelly. Um, one sees, uh, like if we get permission to use the poles, once we put these uh, band, or the bands on the poles, Yes. Is, do they stay there and you just put a flag in and out? Yes. So they can be used for something else. Okay. And, and, and then labor wise, you're only going to need help to put a pole in, not reband it every year. The band stays on the pole, right? All we need is help to install the banner on it. And it just goes on with a steel bar in, I think there's two grommets on the top and two grommets on the bottom. Okay. Perfect. That's, that's, that was my question. I didn't want to make this a, a yearly thing where you had to take the bands down at, no. After, okay, good. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from council? See none. Thanks, Kelly. So That's the next great. step is that staff will contact Ontario Hydro. And if we get permission from them, then we can move forward. That's perfect. That's all we can ask. Thank you. Well, okay. Thanks for your presentation. Did, did, Rosemary, did we, you have something? Nope. Okay. I'm good. Perfect. Thank you. First, time, anything, anything first time you've been quiet in a long time, Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, ladies, for your presentation. So I need a mover and second of the presentation received from Kelly Pearson, Don McClinic, and Rosemary Kennedy relating to a veterans banner proposal for Springfield be received. And that the proposal be referred to municipal staff for further review and consideration or report back to council at a future meeting. Move it. I'll move second. Second by Glinsky. All in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Glinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for attending. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, Brent, we got the uh, Director of uh, Finance and Emergency Services, the activity report. Okay, uh, good evening, Your Worship and Council. I have before you this evening, Malahide Fire Services activity report for the month of December. Uh, it was a little busier December than we've had in the past, uh, but still certainly within the realm of, of what, we, uh, what we've been trending. Um, I think everything is fairly self-explanatory. However, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. 
uh, regarding the December activity report. Thanks, Brent. Questions for Brent on his report? Seeing none, move the second report number F2101 entitled Emergency Services Activity Report December be received. Will it? Widner moves, seconder. Second it. Lewis, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Cerna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have a drainage update report. Matt, are you doing this or Bob? Uh, I'll do this, Your Worship. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead, Bob. Uh, good evening, uh, Your Worship and Council. I have three reports before you tonight. The first one is a biannual drainage update report. Um, this is uh, to provide council with an update on the status of the various drainage works as of January 2021. As you can see, um, we have several, pro quite a few projects actually that are in different phases of completion or non-completion. Um, some are waiting for construction, some are out for tender, some are waiting for reports, and some are waiting for DFO approval, and some are complete. Uh, we have six, I had six drains this uh, summer that were completed. Uh, there's a County Road 24 drain, the Fuller drain, Hans Bud drain, Taylor drain, and the Taylor drain again, a different branch and the Underhill drain. We have uh, five different clean outs that are ongoing in 2021. Kettle Creek drain, the North Van Weichen drain, Walcarius drain, which was completed uh, a couple days ago, Catfish Creek drain and the Staley drain. Uh, as a side note, we completed 51 repairs, various sizes and complexity in 2020, which is the most uh, I've had since I've been here. It was quite a busy year uh, for repairs. So that is all I have to say about that report. Okay, thanks, Bob. Questions for Bob on his uh, drainage update report? Hey, everyone. Go ahead, Rick. Thank you, sir. Um, through you to, to Bob, um, the North Van Weichen drain, I thought that was all looked after. Yeah, uh, so there's actually two projects. Uh, through you, Your Worship, there's actually two projects, Councillor Cerna. There's the south part, uh, which is an ongoing um, project, which will be completed in the spring. And this is a new, and then there's the other, the, the clean out portion, which is the northerly portion of the drain, which is uh, hopefully going to be completed by March 15th. So it's, there are two different projects. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Bob? Seeing the mover and second report number PW2104 entitled Drainage Update Report be received. I'll move it. Serta? Seconder? Second. Moore, all in favor? Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Uh, now we're doing reappointments. Is that you again, Bob? Yes, Your Worship. So this report is to um, comply with Section 39 of the Drainage Act, which states uh, the engineer shall file a report within with the clerk of the init initiating municipality uh, basically within a year. Um, the council has uh, the ability to extend the period for the report. Uh, so council or staff is recommending at this time that council pass a resolution to extend the time for the six, seven drains that are listed on the first page. Questions for Bob? See none, mover and second report number PW2108 entitled reappointment of drainage engineers and various drains be received. And there are seven drains. Mover and seconder? Of it. Move by Moore, seconder? Seconder. Lewis, all in favor? Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. 
Councillor Glinski? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Uh, Dominique, now I'm going to vacate the chair with the Van Rysen name, so I'll let you carry on. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And Bob, I believe the next report is also yours on the Van Weichen drain. Yes, yes. So this uh, report is uh, for the North Van Weichen drain cleanout tender result. We have uh, council received a request for maintenance from a landowner on the North Van Weichen drain. Uh, we did a field investigation to determine that it uh, needed to be cleaned out. We prepared a, a tender. We sent it out to uh, the contractors in the local area. We received three bids. Uh, the low bid was, re was received from Lamers Excavating at $11,500 uh, exclusive of GST. We are satisfied that uh, Lamers can do the work. They have worked for us in the past many times and they're um, very qualified to do the work. So therefore we recommend that uh, council pass a resolution to accept um, the tender from Lamers Excavating. Thank you. Any questions from council members? Seeing none, can I have a mover and seconder? I'll move it. Lewis? I'll second it. Serna? Want to call the vote? I think you're muted. So that the report number PW21-02 entitled Tender Results North Van Weichen Drain Cleanout be received and that the tender for the North Van Weichen Drain Cleanout be awarded to Lemurs Excavating in the amount of 11,500 exclusive of HST. So we have a mover and seconder. Diana, call the vote please. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Carried. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, next, we have the Director of Development Services on uh, building permit report. You're doing that, Adam. Uh, through you, Your Worship, I will defer to Scott Sutherland, who is with okay. us tonight. Go ahead, Scott. Doing well. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, I don't really have any further comments um, than what's in the report there. So unless anyone has any comments or concerns, I'm willing to answer those questions. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Go ahead, Matt. Thank you. This is in regards to grass cutting. Go ahead. This is in regards to grass cutting. Your Worship, the next item on the agenda was actually the award of the Parks and Lawn Maintenance, not the Building Activity Report. Um, but you can still deal with the Building Activity Report if Council so wishes, but uh, there were some reports under the uh, Public Works area following the Van Weichen Drain Cleanup Report. Yeah, I had my, on my list, the Building Permit Activity Report was number one. Uh, Your Worship, I think it's the Parks and Lawn Maintenance Contract Award is the next one. Mm -hmm. Not under not on development services, but still under public works. I do not have that one. Page 57 for the building permit. Yeah, no, I don't have it before me. Anyway, um, we'll let... Uh, Matt or Scott deal with the uh, the building permits to, st to start with. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I don't have any further comments based on the uh, beyond the report. Um, so if anyone's had any questions, I'm willing to answer those. Okay, questions for Scott? Sometimes things get stuck together, but I don't see it. Your Worship, it's number 11 of the resolutions. Yeah, no, I don't have that, Diana. Not in my package. 
Your Worship, we can walk you through that one after this report is completed, after the building activity report uh, is done then. We'll walk you through the other ones. Okay. Okay, so any, any questions for Scott in regard to the uh, building activity report? Yeah, I have one if I could. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Scott. I see that the value for construction is very, very high. Like it's over double what we usually do. Is that just higher end homes or is it bigger buildings? Uh, or? Terrace Lodge, right? Yeah, through you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, the, um, I think it is noted in there that, yeah, mainly that increased value is due to the Terrace Lodge um, addition and renovation. It is a little higher than the last uh, few years, um, but kind of in line with what we've had recently. Yeah, quite a few permits were issued too, so. Yeah, that's right. I suppose the home values are going up and up too. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions for Scott? All right, there's a recommendation for Scott on the 2020 building permit activity report, mover and seconder. Moved by Lewis, seconder. I'll second it. Sir, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Okay, we'll go to the Parks and Lawn Maintenance. Now, Max, you had a question. Well, I have three or four questions, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I see in the report the three areas in Springfield are not listed in the grass cutting contract. My concern is who is going to look after those areas and the maintenance on them, though. The first area is the Springfield Pioneer Cemetery on Whitaker Road. The second area is Tracy Street Park and Playground. And the third area is the Springfield Mill Street Park and Playground. And the fourth area is the Springfield Pumping Station. Matt, or who's going to deal with that one? Uh, yes, so uh, I can, um, Your Worship, with respect to those questions, um, I do believe that uh, though all those um, properties that were noted uh, are included in the grass cutting contract, um, they might just be worded slightly different than what the, the norm would be um, on that, but I'd be happy to confirm that as well. Uh, I've made a note of those, um, particularly just off my head, um, the Tracy Street Park and Springfield Pumping Station uh, are included. Uh, on those lists with those names, but uh, the others might um, be under something different. I can confirm. Your Worship, uh, on, sorry, uh, your Worship, on page 43 of the agenda, it does include a listing of all the properties and included in that is the Pioneer Cemetery, uh, the Mill Street Park, the Tracy Street Park and the pumping station. So yes, they are all included in this particular contract. Okay, thank you. They will be looked after by the individuals looking after Community Place and Lions Hall, et cetera? Uh, yes, it's all part of the, the same uh, contract with one contract. I was just going by the four or five that I read on the resolution. So thank you very kindly. Any other questions for Matt on the uh, parks and lawn maintenance? Seeing none, mover and seconder report number PW2107 entitled Contract Award 2021 to 2023 Parks and Lawn Maintenance be received. And that 2021 to 2023 town, Township Parks and Lawn Maintenance tenders be awarded to Jansen Lawn Care of Elmer at the cost of $1,745 per cut in landscaping maintenance plus HST for all of the township properties. The mayor and clerk be authorized and directed to take the necessary action enter an agreement with Jansen Lawn Care with respect to the township's park and lawn maintenance contract for 2021-2022-2023 season. Move Move second. It. Move by Moore. Jaguar, I'll second. Second by Jaguar. All in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguar? 
Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to the boat, lot, boat launch removal and consideration. Matt, are you doing that one? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yes, good evening, uh, Your Worship and Council. Um, at a prior meeting of council in early December, uh, there was correspondence received from the Port Bruce Ratepayers Association requesting that the temporary boat launch installed uh, by the county to accommodate the new Imperial Road Bridge uh, remain as a permanent boat launch uh, for non-motorized watercraft. Um, staff have reviewed this request and do have a number of concerns with the various options that are available to accommodate this. Um, those being in a township operated or a maintained ramp scenario or leasing the ramp to a private entity. Um, those concerns are listed in the report, many of which have the potential for significant uh, financial impact on the township for both um, physically constructed requirements to safely operate a ramp and fund its asset replacement, and uh, also potential for a costly litigation by businesses um, which have relied on the agreement in place uh, requiring the removal of the ramp. Um, Additionally, staff uh, do not support the recommendation for parking on the grassed area by the entrance sign, as this doesn't meet uh, safety requirements for entrance and egress onto neighboring township and county roads, uh, and additionally carries maintenance concerns when parking on an insuitable grass surface. So uh, accordingly, staff are recommending the township council um, advise county council of the support for removal of the temporary boat launch uh, being consistent with the agreement in place between the county and the Ministry of Natural Resources, and uh, also advise the Port Bruce Payers Association of the decision. Okay, thank you, Matt. And I could just fulfill that in that the at the last county council meeting, county council voted in favor of bringing the boat launch back to its original condition prior to when the bridge went out. Questions for Matt? Dominique? Yeah, just a comment, uh, Mr. Mayor. And um, so first, I, I appreciate the time that staff took to um, have a close consideration of this idea. I want to thank the ratepayers for bringing forward an idea. I think, you know, there was a potential opportunity for, for cost saving and for additional uh, feature for that community. So I think it was worthwhile. Um, but I think the, the decision is sound. Um, I certainly don't necessarily... Um, you know, respond to threats, but to me, the integrity of the agreements that are in place is uh, of utmost importance um, to me. And uh, so I do think that at this moment, this, this is the right uh, recommendation. So thank you to staff. Thanks, Dominique. Any other questions or comments? Rick? I have a comment. Um, as one of the guides first suggested that we keep the ramp, um, when you look at all the legalities of it, uh, I mean, you're shooting yourself in the foot because if we have to go to court over this, I can guarantee you, and I know lawyers, we could probably build two or three boat ramps with the money we'd save in legal fees. So uh, I'm, yeah. I, I have to go along and say, yeah, it's gotta go, it's gotta go. It's too bad, I, we couldn't do something different. Um, hopefully in another hundred years, when we have to put another bridge in, we'll, whoever taking our place will remember this and say, hey, you know, we screwed up a hundred years ago, so let's let's, get this agreement down pat perfect this time. So I'm, I'm all for it. Thank you. Okay, thanks Rick. And keep in mind, there is a, bo there is a, a uh, boat launch for canoes and kayaks on the south side of the bridge that is still there. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, Moore and Secretary report number P <laughs> PW 2105 entitled Port Bruce temporary boat launch removal consideration we received. Township staff be direct to advise Elgin County Council that the Township of Alhide Council recommends the removal of the temporary boat launch located on the north side of the Catfish Creek on Bank Street in Port Bruce consistent with the requirements of the agreement between Elgin County and the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. And Township staff be directed to notify the Port Bruce Ratepayers Association of this decision. Move and seconder. Move by Lewis. Seconder. Second. Moore, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Deputy Mayor Jaguer? 
Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Now we have the uh, reduced load exemption consideration. Matt? Um, yes, uh, this is an interesting one. Um, at a prior meeting of council in March in, in uh, March of 2020, uh, there was correspondence received from Antonison Trucking requesting that uh, reduced load restrictions be removed from Sparta Line during the vulnerable freeze-thaw early spring season. Uh, so staff have reviewed the requirements uh, that the province has relating to reduced per loading periods, which advise that municipalities may enact a bylaw uh, to establish reduced load uh, periods, recognizing the, the integrity of the road at risk due to heavy loading during the freeze, thaw, three, freeze and thaw cycle uh, in March yeah, through May. Uh, specific exemptions to, to reduced loading are only available under very strict criteria, which are noted in the report. So in a nutshell, the township may establish a load as a reduced load road. However, uh, exempt users only very strict criteria. And alternatively, ta the township may entirely remove the restriction from a road segment um, at their discretion. So considering that township road network is constructed and maintained by all ratepayers, and our climate in southwestern Ontario does have very real potential to prematurely degrade the road integrity when heavy loading is reduced during the vulnerable free stop period. Staff recommend continuing with the terms of the current bylaw that all township roads be classified as reduced load, uh, load roads. So that being said, um, we recognize that industry doesn't just shut down from May, from March through May. So staff have prepared the criteria listed in the report for a road user to apply for a reduced load restriction to be, to be removed from a road segment responsibly. Uh, this arrangement ensures that only the benefiting applicant pay for the burden of the reduced life cycle on the road uh, due to the use, uh, and it not be a public burden to need to reconstruct the road segment before the end of its anticipated life. So I can give a brief outline of the intended program. Um, so this firstly requires an applicant to engage a professional engineer to evaluate the expected remaining life of the road segment. Uh, and compare that to the expectancy of a newly constructed road of the same makeup. So the engineer can then model the proposed loading scenario the applicant wishes to use on that road segment to predict the reduced life the road will experience during that period as a result directly of that activity. So using this information, uh, the engineer can then prepare a cost estimate for the present capital dollars required uh, at this time to fund the reduced life cycle the road experiences uh, compared to the expected reduced life. So the difference in these two values would be the fee that would be required by the applicant in order to remove the reduced load restriction from a road segment in a responsible way where only that benefiting user pays for the reduced life of the road uh, because of that activity they would like to use it for. So understanding it's a complex system, um, Staff believe this is a fair and equitable arrangement to responsibly administer the road system where wide usage is still allowed while not impacting the non-benefiting non -benefiting, uh, rate payers. So with, with this criteria, staff recommend uh, advising Antonis and Trucking of the criteria and uh, additionally uh, request that staff, council direct staff to prepare an application form detailing this criteria that uh, other users can benefit from. So I'd be happy to answer any, answer any questions you may have. Okay, thanks, Matt. Questions for Matt and his report? Scott? To you, your worship, to Matt, I'm just wondering if uh, Mr. Antonison maybe won't need this once we uh, give the contract for the waste removal to Miller, to Miller Waste. I just wonder if he won't need that anymore. Let's not go there right now. <laughs> All right. Dominique? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, a couple of questions and a, a comment. So again, I, I really appreciate the, the work and the thought that went into that because that was something that was brought up as uh, Matt mentioned uh, last March. And um, I think it is our intent to really try to accommodate the, the needs of businesses and finding the balance with, you know, not um, putting an additional burden on our ratepayers. So, um, so, so I appreciate that. And presumably this proposed um, approach and policy uh, 
is to help businesses. So have we consulted, have we run it by a few businesses to say, would, would this be helpful? Would this be feasible? Um, so do we have any feedback on that? Because I would hate to make a decision in, in complete isolation if businesses come back and say, well, thanks, but that doesn't help us at all. Or, hey, this is great. Like, I, do we know what the reaction might be? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, I haven't consulted this policy with the private businesses um, in the area. And that the reason for that being, I'm, I'm looking at this from a strictly as the asset manager of that um, facility of that road network where you know, it's the township that does own the road network and being responsible to manage that road network being ours and looking to facilitate a way that it could be usable uh, at a net zero burden to the non-benefiting user. So with this arrangement, it opens up the uh, availability to anybody to use the road at, at their will under the criteria that you're paying for the increased degradation to it from that, that the owner is requiring. Uh, so I didn't look at it so much as uh, whether who it benefits more or less in the private industry, but more just as the manager of that asset. Right. If, if there is a, a window of time, I, I because like I said, this this has an impact on businesses one way or another. So, and I appreciate the you know the the thinking behind it. Um, but I, I certainly, I like to make decisions having consulted with whoever the stakeholders are going to be, you know, impacted by that decision. And I, I feel a little bit in the dark as far as, you know, what the reaction might be and understanding it. And the, the reason for asking is not whether they agree with it or not. It's just, you know, is this um, uh, a feasible, is this something that's feasible for you? Is, is this of, of any use? Otherwise... You know, do we just leave it as is and we keep the, re the reduced load policy as is and let's not bother. So would there be a bit of time to consult with, we know who the businesses are in the past who have applied for permits. Would it be possible to get some feedback from a few? Um, my, uh, my thought on this was, is that to remove the restriction from a road will require um, revising that existing bylaw. So there would be another period where it does have to come back to council before that. that so every, I think in, in this model, every applicant will be different. It could be if somebody um, residing on a township road that needs that access, or if it was a, uh, a developer contracting somebody else to do work on their property or something, depending who the applicant would be, there'd be different needs. Um, so just kind of establishing a, a starting point based criteria that could be reviewed and, and it would be an agreement and on a case by case basis that would in fact have to come back to council uh, regardless before it uh, before it was implemented. Okay, I mean, fair enough. I guess we'll we'll know that we'll have our first case with uh, potentially with um, Antonisen trucking. So yeah, fair enough. I think we have to keep in mind our first priority is condition of the road. Absolutely. And, and certainly this is an avenue that those people could go down. Um, uh, it, it is an option. My guess is that most of those ones that are applying would not want to take this option because it involves investing some money. But, um, but our, road, our road is not protected unless we go through this process. Yeah, and just just to clarify, so in the past, when I have talked to several business owners, um, they have expressed consistently to me that they would be willing to invest and recognize because uh, they do recognize the 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 cost. And but when they compare the cost, the 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 added cost of their business, they're interested in in comparing the added cost of their business when they have to obey by the reduced load. And um, so, so I, I, I disagree that, that businesses are not willing to pay. What they have told me specifically is that they are willing to pay something in recognition of the damage um, and the accelerated uh, life cycle of the road. So, so that's why I, I think there is that willingness to, to work out a solution together. And so that's what I'm hoping we're in the process of doing. It, and certainly this gives them that option to take that going yeah. forward. Yeah, so let's give it a try. Chester, did you have a comment? 
Just a question, Mayor Manel, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, I understand what, where we're coming from and I understand what we're suggesting. However, I'm just wondering, there are, there are businesses that travel not one or two kilometers of township roads, but all of our township roads. And I was just wondering how that's uh, taken into consideration. I know, I know we have to be concerned about keeping the integrity of our roads, but um, how, what are we going to do to accommodate the people that have to travel all the roads, like the fuel trucks, for instance? Well, I know milk trucks are exempt, but I think that's the only one. Is that right, Matt? Um, I've listed, uh, you can see in the report here, the, the exemptions apply to uh, municipal vehicles, uh, vehicles for the transportation of milk, fire apparatus, and public emergency vehicles, and, and that is that is it. So, with um, in a, in a scenario where uh, a person has to use uh, a heavily loaded vehicle on all the township roads, that is a big burden on that and beating up a lot of roads. So, I would still recommend that this system be in be in place, uh, whether it be a, a short stretch of road or a longer stretch of road for that, <laughs> because the modeling can be completed. Uh, to simulate that activity. So we'd want to be manage the road responsibly and whatever network and road system is being used, um, I would still recommend that be the, be the case. And the, the cost of such a, a program would depend on what length of road the applicant would be looking to use. Any other questions for Matt? Mark? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Matt, I'm looking at a report and a news article was done on March 5th, 2019, and it's basically said this was from Elgin and Middlesex County, about half load season. Um, basically what they're saying, you, on a major road, you can still run the normal weight, but it's the rural roads where you're down to five tones per axle. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's um difference between what a normal road is and, and what isn't and what a rural road is. It's uh, largely dependent on what there's many different cross sections that can be built on a road depending on the traffic volume there. So uh, a road that receives minimal traffic wouldn't, may not be built to the same standard as uh, a higher volume road. So it's largely dependent of whatever road that would be uh, being used would have a different um, typical cost per kilometer to reconstruct that road based on what cross section that might be. So for an easy example being a county road versus a township road where they're built uh, significantly different cross sections and can carry different weights uh, at different times. Okay, so would 45 and like Ron McNeil, would they be considered half load roads? No. No. Okay, it's just our concession roads? The, all, the, all township roads are, the county roads are, are not. Okay, so when a fellow has to do a route, then he's fine once he leaves our roads. It's just our roads, is that what you're saying? That's correct. Okay, this news article maybe reads a bit different than that. So um, they said it's to protect county roads also. But um, it seems like we get tagged with this problem every year and I don't know why because everyone in Ontario has the same rules. You know, so uh, we're gonna do something we have to make. I don't know why it's always us. Like I know there was a big problem in Lyons last year with a fuel trip. Well, yeah, so just, uh, just to clarify, yeah, it, it is, it's up to the respective council to designate, a, has the full power to designate a load as half load roads or to not to have half load roads. It's not a requirement that they are half loads, but it's a definitely recommended practice based on the cross sections that our roads are built to. Right, but it seems like we're the municipality that has the problem. Is, is Central Algon granting carte blanche to everybody and it's BAM and? I don't believe that's the case, no. So they get here and all of a sudden it's a problem. And I know it was MTO doing the enforcement last year and we were getting tagged and blamed for that. Well, we don't control MTO. No. Thank you. Rick, you had a question? Yeah, I, I, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last year, I think we brought this up about uh, dollar car and fuel trucks. And after talking about it and all that stuff, the only thing we come up with is they have to get smaller delivery trucks because there was something in there that said you can't do what you wanted to do, especially when they go all over the place. And I think the only way they can change it, if they can get the provincial government to add that on as one of their uh, 
essential vehicles. Because it is, it says here, vehicles used exclusively for the transportation of milk. Well, if you can't feed the cows because you can't bring the food in there, you're not going to get any milk to take out of there either. So, I mean, they, these guys have, have to do whatever they got to do in it. And probably through the provincial government more so than, than the township council is where they got to start. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. Mover and second report number PW2106 entitled Reduce Load Exemption Consideration Be Received. Township staff be requested to notify Antoinette Trucking of the recommended criteria as outlined in this report to allow for the removal of reduced load loading restrictions on a subject road segment. Township staff be directed to prepare an appropriate application form, fee schedule to allow a proponent to apply for the removal of the reduced loading restrictions from a subject roadway consistent with the criteria described in this report. Mover and seconder, please. Jagger, I'll move. Jagger, move. Seconder? I'll second it. Uh, sir, all in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Cerna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jagger? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the uh, 20, the curbside uh, waste re, uh, collection. I'm going to suggest that we postpone that uh, because we do have some more information that we're going to deal with in closed session. So we'll go into close and then we'll come back out and we'll deal with the, the contract award for 2021, if that's permissible by council. Fine with me. Okay. We'll move on. We've dealt with the building permits already. And the supplementary building uh, consultant services. Scott or Alan, Adam? Yes, I will deal with this one, uh, Your Worship. So this report seeks council approval to allow the chief building official to uh, utilize the on-demand service provided by the RSM building consultants. As I've provided in the report, the reciprocal agreement in place with the other municipalities to deal with vacations uh, with inspectors and CBOs remains in place. Uh, and if the recommended action is approved, the RSM inspectors would be employed only when needed simply to maintain the department of, departmental efficiency and ensure development in uh, Malahide is not burned by delays. Scott did reach out to his CBO counterparts in the Southwestern Ontario chapter in advance of preparing this report to seek what other alternative companies or options exist. And based on their yeah. responses to him, uh, yeah. RSM appears to be indeed be the only suitable option available. Uh, the company out of Mississauga appears to no longer be providing services at, at least at this time. Uh, so thank you, Your Worship. There's nothing further to add. However, Scott and myself are available to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Adam. And certainly with the Terrace Lodge, a $30, 30 million project going on, it's going to demand a lot more of your time. So certainly I understand that the need for this uh, support service. Questions for Adam? Dominique? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, um, I think it says in the report that uh, we do have a, a budget. This has been reserved in the in the budget. Can you remind me of, uh, of what that budget amount is, and would you consider that then the upper limit of uh, of the contract that we would have with this firm? Through you, Your Worship, I may ask Arun to step in, but. Um, we're not using that upper limit as, as we're not going to maximize that upper limit. Uh, our building department will utilize it only when needed and, and we will certainly monitor the amount of time and, and uh, uh, situations where, where they are needed. Um, as, as the mayor had spoken to just previously, the, each individual building permit application sometimes has that sufficient enough uh, financial fee that would cover RSM services when they're deemed necessary by the CBO, but perhaps uh, through you, Your Worship, if Arun could maybe speak to the, 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 the line item. Go ahead, Arun. Sure, through Your Worship, um, uh, we do have 25,000 budgeted 
to be taken from reserves to fund this particular item. And that 25,000 is uh, uh, flowed strictly from the building permits reserve. So any surplus from previous years from the building permits is to be utilized for building activities. So if it so happened that uh, activity was so high that we needed to engage RSM above and beyond what is currently in the budget, we do have that specific reserve which is available only for building department activity. And that's where um, it would flow from if it need, if need be subject to the reserve, um, subject to the fees that we are already earning from building permits revenue in that particular year already. So if, Dominic, if I may then just clarify, so we could potentially, if there's a need, so I understand it's as needed, um, but it could exceed 25,000 potentially. It, we, we would go into additional reserves or can we set uh, a it, limit for it, this year? It could be funded from current uh, permit fee revenue itself, or it could be from um, reserves. And as the director has uh, clarified, it would be on an as needed basis. Right now, the estimates that lead to the 25,000 suggest that it will be quite sufficient. This, And the contract is not for a X number of permits or X number of hours as such. It is as is so similar to an on-call contract. So uh, I don't think staff are at this moment recommending any upset limit or any ceiling uh, because this is building permit activity, which results in growth and revenue for the township. And if Adam wants to speak further. Yes, thanks, Rune, through you, Your Worship. I think if we're going to be in situations where we're looking at meeting that top threshold, we may be looking at situations where we need more permanent options uh, as opposed to RSM. That me means we're having either a tremendously busy building year or we're getting um, certain uh, industrial and commercial applications, which would be great, but it would be severely impacting Scott's, uh, Scott's resources. So uh, under those circumstances, that would be great for the township. Yeah, and, and that's, I guess, thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor, that's what I'm getting at. Like, I, I would like to have some sort of threshold that triggers us to revisit, um, because if we're having to exceed 25,000, we have, we need perhaps another issue. So that's why I would like to agree on an amount that will trigger us to reconsider our approach. And so, so to, I, I wasn't fully comfortable with like an, an open account that just says, well, as much as you need it, just keep going to that service. So I would like a, a check-in point. Your Worship, if I may jump in for a moment to maybe ahead, the, the deliberations. Um, so first of all, I, I think, while we're gonna enter into a contract with this organization, um, I wanna make it really clear, if for whatever reason, um, building permit volumes, so building permit activity is not significant enough that it um, puts a strain on our current staff's ability to be able to respond to building the, those applications, then there will be no um, need to draw on this service at all. So if for whatever reason building permit numbers start to go down, which we haven't seen in the last few years, but if they start to go down, then um, I would suggest to you that staff's ability to be handle the number of permits and, and other than maybe some specialized types of permits, the certainly the quantity would be able to be held or handled sufficiently. And we might have a situation where we don't need um, RSM's uh, assistance at all. Um, alternatively, as has been mentioned, the volume of permits may increase. And I can assure you that staff will be coming back to council um, if this becomes a long-term trend or even we have seen some increases in the last couple of years and everyone keeps saying that we're going to see, you know, all of a sudden the numbers are going to go down and we, we have not seen that, which is wonderful for the township, but puts some strain on existing staff resources. So um, council will also recall that through the service delivery review project, we are proposing to potentially uh, consider some partnerships or some shared services with some of our other neighbors in the building department um, area. And so one of the other purposes of this particular using this consultant is that this is kind of a stopgap measure while we work through some longer term strategies. So I can definitely um, assure council 
that we staff will be coming back to you with options uh, to address uh, continued building permit activity and the needs as well as hopefully coming back to you with some positive language around shared services or partnerships with some of the other area municipalities. So um, this will allow us to be able to continue to deliver good service and timely service to our developers and our residents that need building permits and, and um, without impacting uh, the tax levy or without putting an unreasonable strain on our existing staff and resources. So there is lots more information to come uh, to council be in the next few months as we start to flesh out some of these other details. Uh, but in the meantime, this will allow us, as I said, to be able to continue and ensure that all of the needs are met and our staffing resources are not overwhelmed in the process. And I think we have to keep in mind that the demand on our services as they go up, our building uh, permits uh, fees go up as well. So it's, it's sort of a catch 22, you're, you're, you're even it off. It, you know, especially with Terrace Lodge having three stages, we're gonna have considerable income, but also considerable demand on our services. So one will balance off the other. Absolutely. Any other questions, Jess? Uh, Mayor Manel, I was just wondering uh, when it was mentioned that we're going to have shared services, uh, I hope we're not hiring a consultant firm so that we can uh, share our services with a neighboring municipality because that would just be a burden on our uh, uh, system as opposed to the other area carrying uh, their fair share. Your worship, Michelle? just to clarify, um, the consultant's work in preparing the service delivery review has already been completed. Um, with respect to hiring this consultant to us, assist us in the short time frame, or as a stopgap measure, as I had mentioned, um, the, there isn't an intention that um, once we have an opportunity potentially to partner or uh, firm agreements with any of our neighbors, it's anticipated that the combined resources with these partnership opportunities would allow us to essentially minimize the need for any of these additional consulting services. Okay, Jess, any other questions? Thank you. Seeing done. Mover and second report number DS2105 entitled supplementary by building code consultant services to be received. Municipal staff be authorized to utilize RSM building consultants to provide to support and services to the building service department on an as needed basis as outlined in this report. Mayor and clerk be authorized to direct the, and execute the necessary document to engage in the services of RSM building consultants. Mover and seconder. Move by Moore, seconder. Second it. Second by Widner, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Glinski? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. Thank you. Before we lose Adam, I have a concern or a complaint that I got yesterday. Is this the time to bring it up? It's in regards to an ongoing zoning concern problem. Uh, we should bring that up under, under uh, new business, Max, if you don't mind. Okay. Make Adam aware that I want to talk to him. Okay, so we thank certainly you. will do so. Uh, telecommunication communication tower, is that you again, Adam? Yes, it is. Thank you, Your Worship. So, um, council may see these every every handful of years or so. It's a it's a in this case a communication tower in just outside uh, Springfield on Ron McNeil Line. As council is aware, the, this process is federally regulated. So um, all that's left for council to do is, if it's interested in doing so, is is providing a support resolution um, to the agency looking to install the tower so that they can gain some points as for their federal approval. So this is proposed by Signum, Signum Wireless as, as stated in my report. The location of the tower in proximity to the road in proximity to the road does appear close, but I, I can confirm to council that it does meet zoning setbacks. 
Um, so it that has gone through the review process and, and circulated through the township and with agencies and there's been no concerns raised. So unless there's any questions from council, there's nothing further to add to my report. Thank you, Adam. And just to clarify, this would be just for cell phone service alone. That's what's proposed at this juncture. I, I don't know if there's any opportunities for uh, this company or if they're willing to or open to uh, leasing other components on the tower. Uh, I, I did speak with our um, IT manager and, and he was of the opinion he's dealt with these situations before and these companies are likely not open to sharing uh, space on their towers, but that hasn't been confirmed with the, with the company. Okay, thanks, Adam. Questions for Adam? Dominique? Mr. Mayor, um, so I just wanted to further confirm that um, we can assume that neighboring residents residences have been notified because I think the, the picture is a bit misleading the, the one that shows the road with the field that looks like it's in the middle of nowhere when if you just pan a little bit I believe there's a residence right across from the intended location so can we confirm that the neighbors have been notified and uh, consent has been approved so we're supporting something they support the the onus is on the the applicant in this case signum wireless to circulate there is a federal requirement similar to a zoning bylaw amendment there to cir circulate 120 meters uh around this the the base of the tower so any properties uh situated within that buffer are to be circulated not by the township but by in this case signum wireless they've they've advised uh myself that there has been no response in in uh due to uh from that circulation your Worship, just to add to that, um, the circulation, the uh, owner information of the property surrounding, um, the uh, applicant actually contacts the, the township. We provide that ownership information. So that's based on our most current assessment rules. So um, they actually get the mailing list from us. We, we draw the, the radius. So all of the individuals that were identified in that radius, um, the mailing list was provided by us to the applicant. Again, it's the responsibility of the applicant, but we're confident that that radius has been achieved providing the applicant has, uh, has sent those out. And there has, uh, Adam has indicated, there has been no, um, no co uh, concerns or any complaints that have been received. Um, so we don't necessarily know whether they have quote supported it, but they, we have not received any information to suggest anyone has any concerns at this stage. And as far as you know, they would have been, they would have received uh, a piece of mail, like direct mail to them as opposed to advertising or, okay. Yes, that's correct. So um, those individuals within the 120 meters definitely received uh, a notice by direct mail. As well, there was a, an advertisement that was placed in the Elmer Express um, as, a, as a public notice as well. But absolutely, those individuals in that radius would have received a, a, a direct mail. Thank you. Any other questions for Adam? I have one if I could. Mark? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through to Adam. Yes, Adam, you say this is under federal jurisdiction? Yes, it is. I have a little bit of a concern. It's really close to the highway. This thing's 150 feet tall. It's 15 meters back from the road. Um, I know when we put the windmills up, when we were involved with that, we made them back far enough. If they ever did fall over, they wouldn't land on the road. Um, I know it may be a stretch, but this thing could get covered with ice. That ice could be blowing down on our highway. People could be you know, hurting vehicles. So I don't like where it is, but it, it, we have no choice. We have to say yes to this anyway, I guess, right? Well, not necessarily. That's in council's prerogative. I know some municipalities, uh, given that this is these are federally regulated uh, installations, municipal zoning bylaws are essentially silent on on these sort of structures. But in this case, Malahide's zoning bylaw requires such structures to meet uh, the zoning bylaw front yard setback. In this case, I uh, if I recall, I think it's 15 meters or tw uh, in the zone that it's situated. I think it's 15 or 20 meters. It's meeting that, albeit. Uh, barely, um, but it's it's up to council. It, it, what council has the uh, option to do tonight is simply to provide them, the applicant, with a support resolution. If council doesn't see that this is uh, in the municipality's interest, it doesn't it it doesn't need to provide that support. Jeff, did you have a question? Yes, I did, Mayor Manel. 
Does this have anything to do with a presentation that we had from administration uh, several weeks ago uh, about uh, two towers going up? And I see this is only one here. So am I correct in thinking that this is over and above the other two towers that uh, we might have something to do with? Your Worship, if I may, um, this particular tower is a cell tower, not a tower that is intended for broadband services. So two totally different functions and it's absolutely not anything that was referred to in the administration's pre uh, presentation from a few weeks ago. This is a separate and distinct, distinct uh, private request from Sigmund uh, Communications. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Certainly we need to improve some of the cell phone activity in our township and this will do it. So I need a mover and second report number DS2107 until a wireless telecommunication tower request for township support be received. The council of the township of Malahide does hereby support the installation of the proposed telecommunication tower by Sigmund Wireless to be located at part lot 2223 concession 10 municipally now as 51. 549 Ron McNeil line. Move and seconder. Move it. Moved by Lewis, seconder. I'll second it. Serna, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Arun, you're doing the next one on uh, assessment adjustments. Yes, Your Worship. Um, this is a as annual or a couple of times during the year that we bring forward to council any adjustments resulting from um, adjustments to the property assessments. And as you will see, there are a a couple of properties this time where they have been reclassified from residential <coughs> to farm and resulting in the assessment reduction, which means that the taxes applicable to those properties also reduces. And so um, there would be a uh, refund where we already have payments received or we would uh, charge them reduced taxes. So uh, if there's any questions regarding the report, I'm happy to answer. Okay, thank you, Arun. Questions for Arun on the uh, adjustments? Just have a comment on one if I could. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The one I was kind of involved with, just trying to help the person out, um, through no fault of his own, he lost his farm status and the whole farm went to residential. He did absolutely nothing wrong. He didn't forget to sign anything. He didn't forget to do anything. It was almost a two-year battle. MPAC and AgriCorps, they're not very happy they work with, that's for sure. Um, Tanya in her office, was, she did her best to try to get some terrains, but at the end of the day, it took Jeff Yurick's office and it took them a bit to get this changed. But in the, in the interim, this guy had to pay the taxes himself, you know, pay this huge amount. And now he just he waited almost two years to get it back. So when I see this and now I see this happen to an individual, this really you know, hits home. So I don't know what we can do. We can just maybe say impact and AgriCorps has got to get their act together and work together. But. Um, this is an elderly gentleman. It was a lot of money. It was a lot of heartache and a lot of pain for him. So just so council knows that I know this one and then I, I feel sorry for him, but I'm glad we can get his money back now. Thank Thanks, you. Mark. Any other questions for everyone? See, Mark, there is a recommendation before you. Mover and seconder for the recommendation, please. I'll move it. Move by Winder, seconder. Second. Lewis, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Next, we have reports from outside boards, one from the Long Point. Any questions or comments on that one? Seeing none, mover and second of the following reports from committee and outside board be noted and filed. Long Point Regional Conservation Authority Board of Directors minutes, December 2nd, 2020. Mover and Move. seconder. Moved by Moore, seconder. I'll second it. Serna, all in favor. 
Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Minnell? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Uh, next, we have correspondence. There's six items. Anyone wish to make comment? Support? Yeah, I have one. Mark? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Number two, the municipality of Charlton and Dak and Township of Lager Lake resolution requesting the province to address seven insurance issues, including replacement of joint and several liability, and investigate the unethical practice of preferred vendors. Uh, you're reading their report. I mean, we're having an awful time with insurance with you know our municipality and the county. So anything we can do to alleviate some of those problems, I think we should support. Thank you. I agree with you, Mark. I don't know if you'd watch TV where some of the, the guys clearing snow, they're yeah. Their uh, liability insurance went up like sixfold in one year. It's it's really ridiculous. It is so certainly. I would I would support number two as well. Anything else? Seeing none, we're supporting uh, number two and receiving file of the ballot. So mover and seconder for that, please. I'll move it. Move by Winder, seconder. Jagger, oh. I'll second. Jagger, all in favor. Councillor Widner. Yes. Councillor Moore. Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Uh, Max, you had other business? I do, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yesterday, I received an email, and I'm sure all council got it. The complaint was from Krista and Peter Weber. 11610 Springfield Road, actually in the south end of the village of Springfield. And the complaint is in regards to Bayham construction beside them at 11620 Springfield Road, running a business in a residential zone. They want to know what is being done to address their concerns as there has been an ongoing complaint. No, I'm sure, I'm not sure, but I know that our department, our building people have received complaints. They've been out there. I think it was Scott, I'm not sure. Several times we have the copies of the letters with on the iPad. So I'm just asking, I guess, Adam or Scott or whoever, what is going on with, uh, with this ongoing concern to save me the rare and tear on my email and on my telephone. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I, I see ongoing correspondence the back and forth between Scott, but uh, Scott, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, do you want to bring us, a, give us an update on what's going on? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of correspondence with them since uh, from a few months ago. I, I think that the BAM contractors, they moved into that property recently. Um, they kind of brought along their construction uh, equipment that they store there on the property. A lot of their work is done off site, but they are, I think um, employees are coming there um, every day, picking up uh, construction equipment and stuff and going off to the properties where they're doing the work. Um, I kind of assumed that everything was it was going okay because we haven't heard from them in a while and then I did receive that email um, yesterday or this morning or when it came in um, that they're not happy again um, with some of the stuff that's going on there so we are going to have to follow up I did speak to Adam about it uh, this morning as well and he agrees that uh, the property is not zoned properly for um, even storing this equipment, even if all their work is done offsite. So, so where are you moving forward from this now, Scott? Uh, I'm going to uh, talk to Adam about it and we're going to draft up a letter to send to the, the resident uh, of the property that's running the construction business that they're going to have to either um, move their construction stuff offsite to a, a properly zoned property. Through you, Your Worship, yes. I, Scott briefed me with this um, situation this morning. I haven't thoroughly looked at the zoning bylaw, uh, but what Scott has explained to me does appear to be the case, and I will look further into it uh, as soon as possible. 
Okay. Um, if I may, uh, staff will definitely be looking into this matter further and probably more details with respect to the ongoing investigation probably aren't an item for open session. So um, we will continue to keep members of council apprised and we will, but staff would definitely be looking into the complaint and addressing it. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. Thank Any you. other business? I have. Go ahead, Rick. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, I have a, a lot of calls here lately and it's, it's kind of funny because it's the other way around with these garbage bag tags and people are asking me if we pay for that and we put it on their tax bill i think they said they pay 40 dollars is attached to it for garbage bag tags is that correct i believe it's something like that yeah okay so if you're paying for something why at the end of the year is it no good anymore like they you we're making them pay 40 dollars for garbage bag tags and then Come the December thirty first, we're saying, okay, that tag's no no longer any good. So so I don't know how you get around that because because really really if, if you run out of tags, you have to go buy more. But if you have excess, you can't use them anymore. They're done. It's garbage. And so that's kind of a one way thing to look or one way to look at it is that uh, you know if you need more, you pay. If you got extra, too bad. It's garbage. So. Uh, I don't know if we can look into that a little bit different to, or or what, what to do about that. I've done this road before. Any okay. comments, staff? Your Worship, if I may, um, I'll start and then I may ask uh, Arun or Matt to, to jump in. So yes, there is an allotment that um, eligible properties are able to obtain and the cost of that is included in their final tax bill each year. Um, the garbage tag allotment, there was consideration given uh, by the Waste Management Review Committee as to whether or not we should be looking at establishing permanent tags or continuing to only have tags that were eligible for the one year that they were assigned. Um, there was a lot of discussion and debate about it at the time. The decision of the group and then subsequently was reported back to Council with respect to the amendments to the, or the update of the waste management plan um, was that we would continue with the annual tags at this stage. Um, and I apologize, but I don't recall the specific details as to all of the rationale as to why that decision was made. But um, there, we have received similar um, concerns from some individuals. Uh, there was also, council will recall, a recommendation from staff that we look at having uh, some type of a draw or incentive for individuals that had extra tags at the end of the year to be able to submit them and then we would have better information going forward to be able to make decisions so we're right now we're not sure whether or not um, it's 10 people that have leftovers at the end of the year or all but 10 people have leftovers at the end of the year and so having some of that level of detail helps us to be able to make decisions going forward. Um, we have heard these concerns in the past, Councillor Cerna, and um, we have had some discussion and we are hoping to be able to gather more data. Unfortunately, COVID has challenged us a little bit in collecting um, excess tags from individuals and that got postponed as council will recall um, last fall, I believe the decision, September, I believe the decision was made to not move ahead with that um, draw or incentive program to be able to gather that information, but it is still our hope to do so and then have better information on making decisions going forward. So it's definitely not um, an immediate decision that we're contemplating making, but something that is absolutely going to be reviewed as we move forward with our waste management program. Okay, thank you. Dominic. Um, oh, I have one more thing. But... Um, Go ahead, Dominic. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I was going to add that uh, just going back to those discussions and because uh, I've had to explain that same um, or an answer that same query before. And um, you may recall that we did a survey um, to ask our residents if they wanted our, the bag tags fee to cover the entire cost of the waste management uh, or kind of a, a hybrid um, or none at all. And then we do away with garbage tags. and. Um, the, the, at least the, the vote from the consultation was a, a hybrid model. So I think what we need to understand is that the, the fee for the bag tags does not cover the entire 
uh, cost of the waste management program. So it's not like a dog tag. If you have a dog, you pay. If you don't have a dog, you don't pay because built into, so it, it's uh, the bag tag is only a portion of the fee. So when you don't use your tags, you, you're still um, having to contribute to, uh, to the whole waste management. So I don't know if that helps, but that is one way I've been able to uh, explain it. And the other option is that you can gift those bag tags to a neighbor who's run out or you can sell it, it's up to you. If I Let may you... add your worship. Go ahead, Aaron. So we, our annual allotment is about 60 bag tags and considering we have a 52 week year, the 60 tags are, are you know, that, that's part of the waste management master plan where we have roughly one bag tag a week. So. Um, it is not an inordinate number of back tags that residents are paying for. And in fact, the entire month of December, we have had a large number of um, residents. And again, to support what Michelle said, we don't have exact numbers, but we certainly had a large amount of foot traffic to the office asking for more back tags. So while certain residents may not use their entire allotment, there is um, other people in the community who seem to have the need as well. Rick, you have a, a, a follow-up? No, not on this. I had another subject, but but uh, I'll wait till the garbage stuff is done and then I got something else I want to ask. Okay. Any other questions? There's nothing for our other business. We do have a bylaw. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> what? Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. I said I had another topic I'd like to bring up. Okay. What's your okay. other topic? Well, um, a couple of years back, we had to put stop signs at all the railroad crossings. And and my understanding now is that, that those tracks that were going to be put into use are being decommissioned again. Is uh, Can anybody help me out with that? Who wants to field that one? I can jump in here, uh, Mr. Go Mayor. Ahead, well, I don't know uh, the details of which which tracks are uh, being de decommissioned or, or used. That is uh, part of the uh, Ontario, Ontario traffic manual that um, where there is a, uh, an unsignalized crossing, uh, the stop sign has to be put up. That's, that's just part of the manual. And at that time, when those uh, signs went up, the those respective tracks had the option to be uh, commissioned uh, for use or uh, or um, decommission. So it's it's kind of a, an imperfect system where if it's if it's there's potential for use at those, the, the law says that there has to be a stop sign up. But if the track is going to be decommissioned, doesn't it seem kind of silly to stop at a uh, stop sign at a railroad track that's not ever going to be used? Like, can't we go and jerk those things out? Your Worship, my understanding of what uh, the director is indicating is that until we receive formal notification that the decommission has actually been completed, we're not able to remove the stop signs. The stop signs have to stay there, even though there may be they may be in the process of being decommissioned. And I don't have information to that effect. I don't know whether they are or whether they aren't. But until they've until we receive for, formal notification that they have been decommissioned and those processes take some time, um, the stop signs are required still to be there. Okay, thank you. Any other business? Seeing none, we'll go to bylaws. Mover and seconder bylaw number 21-10, being a bylaw to appoint building official under the Building Code Act, be given a first, second, third reading, properly signed and sealed. Move it. Move by Moore, seconder. I'll second it. Serna, all in favor. I think Diana muted. Diana. You're muted, Diana. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Now we need a mover and second of the council to move into closed session at 8.55. Pursuant to section 239-2 uh, of the Municipal Act 2001 is amended to discuss the following. One personnel matter, 
about identifying individuals related to Malahide Fire Services, volunteer firefighter attendants, and two, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local boards related to procurement process. So mover and seconder for that. Move it. I'll move it. Widner and Serna, all in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Serna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. So we'll have a two minute break and then we'll come back when staff is ready to go into closed session. Okay, now we're back in open session. Just Matt, can you give us a brief overview of the, uh, the uh, waste collection uh, uh, contract? Yes, through you, your worship. Um, as detailed in my report, um, the township did recently go to RFP for a new waste collection contractor as the current contract is expiring uh, in May, the end of May this year. So uh, as detailed in the report, we, from a small pool of contractors, we did get four proposals uh, sent sent through. Um, the proposal or the uh, RFP stipulated a two envelope system where uh, there's a technical proposal portion and a financial proposal proportion. Um, there are three of the contractors scored very highly on the technical proposals and one uh, contractor didn't meet the threshold in order to, for us to open up the uh, financial proposal. So I can give a, we scored, uh, the township staff scored all of the um, qualified proposals using criteria that were set out in the RFP document. And uh, Miller Waste Systems uh, scored highest uh, in both the technical uh, proposal and also provided the lowest uh, financial uh, cost option. So the uh, RFP was uh, structured to provide uh, contractors flexibility in proposing what in what way they would collect the township's uh, waste and recycling. So the lowest uh, cost proposal received from Miller included a uh, week one and week, and week two recycling collection schedule, uh, where week one would include uh, pickup of containers and week two includes pickup of fibers and of course, uh, weekly pickup of garbage. So this involves um, Miller providing uh, new vehicles, waste collection vehicles, um, highly trained staff and a full support system to undertake the plan. Um, what I am very impressed with with this proposal is how well it aligns with the 2020 update of the Waste Management Master Plan in uh, looking to increase diversion rates with this week one, week two system allows uh, residents to be more aware of what they're putting in uh, each blue box uh, and when it gets picked up. So it's, uh, it's definitely an, an awareness uh, aspect and having spoken with uh, Miller, they've seen success in this program elsewhere. Um, also of particular note is uh, the township's transition to the provincial blue box, uh, out of the blue box program, um, which were set for 2023. And uh, Miller's poised himself to help us through that uh, transition um, as they uh, have direct involvement in that legislation. So uh, in summary, this lowest price option um, comes in just under $550,000 for the first year of the contract. Uh, which would be adjusted for the CPI uh, for the uh, remaining years of the contract. Um, this is a large increase over the township's budget amount, but that being said, uh, the RFP was very well received with a spread of around two and a half percent between the lowest two bids. Um, that gives me confidence that retendering uh, wouldn't provide any benefit as we did receive multiple options and close financial bids for all options uh, that were on the table. So uh, for these reasons, uh, staff recommend proceeding with awarding this contract to Willer Mace for the open scope week one, week two program um, and funding the budget shortfall from the working capital reserve, noting that uh, future uh, contract price adjustments and uh, making up for the shortfall would be included in the respective budgets for those uh, upcoming years. So I'd be happy to answer any, any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Matt. Questions for Matt on the waste, or waste collection? Seeing none, there's a rec. Oh, Mark, did you have a question? Yeah, I just had a question. I did talk to Matt today. Um, a couple of questions I had. We're going to bi weekly pickup now. It'll be fiber one week and then the like glass and everything the next week. Will people need bigger boxes? Um, do they have to pay for them or will they be provided or how is that going to work? Because if you're going to hold something for two weeks, you probably might need more capacity. Thank you. 
So th that, that's a very good question. Um, it wasn't contemplated as part of this uh, proposal. Um, I believe the cost is $7 for, uh, per blue box uh, for uh, a resident to, to purchase. Now, the in theory, status quo, the um, amount of recycling doesn't change on, uh, on the implementation of the program where you're still using the same containers, you're still using the same newspapers uh, as prior, but as the program progresses, uh, the intent is that you are recycling more. So that could in fact lead to the need for um, larger recycling bins or more recycling bins. But at the outset, that's, that hasn't been contemplated uh, on the project. But in reality, that is the, that is the hope that um, more recycling does go into the stream. Um, so it, uh, it hasn't been contemplated to provide everybody with, with more, uh, recognizing we don't have a direct um, indicator of how, of, quantifying that, how much more is actually going to be at this time. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for Matt? Thank Tony? you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Max. In regards to the changeover, when will that take effect? The first of June, and will there be difference, differences in the pickup? And if there is, will those notices go out to each resident in the township as to what those changes are, what will be picked up, and when it will be picked up? Uh, through you, Your Worship, uh, absolutely. The uh, In the technical proposal that Miller provided, there detail uh, a strong implementation plan working with the current service prov provider to ensure minimal disruption. So that's the, the main reason for trying to get um, this uh, award done early in the year. So we do have a longer transition period uh, to be able to work with residents, get um, new routing information and any changes uh, make the public aware of that, which um, Miller will assist with um, because, because their routes may not be the exact same that uh, the current provider does. And there will obviously, obviously be changes. So everybody has to be uh, made aware of that well in advance. And uh, yes, you're correct. That, that changer would be a changeover would be of June 1st. Thank you. Donnie. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you uh, to Matt. So yes, yeah, so it, Obviously, it's a huge increase, so so that's uh, tough to swallow. But understand that's the reality. I hope they know that they're coming in where there is already uh, a high degree of satisfaction with the service, and you can imagine with the the increase um, for sure there won't be any tolerance for any uh, decrease in, in service level. That's for sure. And in fact, I'm wondering with the transition, uh, you're probably aware there are small tweaks. There's some small concerns here and there uh, throughout the township of people, um, for example, having to cross the street and uh, to put their garbage and um, maybe there's a safety concern about the depth of the ditch and, and so on. So do you think there'll be a, an openness and opportunity even if residents have input into perhaps this is a, a chance to, to fix and, and try to address uh, these concerns? Uh, yes, I, I think that right now is the perfect time uh, to receive some of those concerns. Uh, I would anticipate that um, Miller's uh, administrative staff would uh, look at the most absolute efficient way to pick, to pick up as possible, looking at um, how to navigate the township roads. And then beyond that, we would uh, make requests and see what they, what, how far they can stretch and where we need to get to. So um, obviously all, all uh, concerns won't be able to be met. Uh, if it's not, if it can't be done in an economical way uh, for, for the contractor, but then now is definitely the time for uh, us to make those requests as they figure out their routing and, and staffing and, and those things. Okay, I think that'll be appreciated. Thank you. Jess, you had a question? I'm, yeah, thank you, Mayor Manel. I'm just not as optimistic as everybody that, that we're going to experience uh, more, more savings by, uh, uh, more going into recycling. I think, for one thing, stuff that's going into the recycling is now going to go into the garbage bags that are only half filled, so they will be completely filled. So we're going to see an increase. And I don't know, I, I see too many garbage bags uh, now along the side of the road uh, to um, think that this is going to get accepted 
wholeheartedly and be satisfactory. I think we're somehow opening up a can of worms and we're going to see more stuff down uh, Thumbhill Road than we did before. And I've seen a lot down there. Okay, thanks, Jess. I've got more faith in the uh, residents of Malahide that really want to recycle and do it the right way. Any other questions or Matt? There is a recommendation before you. Can I have a mover and second over the recommendation? I'll move it. Moved by Lewis, seconder. I'll second it. Sir, no. All in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Cerna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Now we have a need a mover and second or bylaw number 2109. We got a confirmatory bylaw. We got a first, second, third reading, properly signed and sealed. <laughs> Mover Move and seconder. Move it. Move by Moore, seconder. I'll second it. Third, all in favor. Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Cerna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Oh. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. Thank you. And, and Mover and second of the council adjourn its meeting at 9.45 p.m. to meet on February 4th at uh, 7.30. Galinsky and Widner, all in favor? Councillor Widner? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Cerna? Yes. Councillor Lewis? Yes. Councillor Galinsky? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jaguer? Yes. Mayor Manel? Yes. Carried. <laughs>